time for another quick update. The panel's not finished yet. Of course it's debatable whether it's ever going to be finished. There's always something to fiddle with. But we've got a pretty comprehensive set of instruments now and I'm happily flying the aircraft around on these. There's a few things still to be done. A few things to polish here and there. But by and large, I mean I've hardly got any space left on the panel as well. You can resize these instruments but I've resized them to the extent that I think is necessary to create a reasonable layout. Just one thing to say on the monitors, you, you remember I've got my engine panel on a monitor that's mounted in portrait orientation and it is an IPS monitor which means that the viewing angles are quoted as quite high both in the vertical and horizontal directions. Now that's not the whole story and in fact this monitor on the left when I'm sitting in the cockpit seat those gauges are starting to fade out. Now, interestingly enough, I've, I've adjusted the contrast and the brightness of the monitors to be probably about half of what it was by standard. So when you first see them, you might think they look slightly dim, but the brightness and contrast levels are adjusted to be in keeping with the illumination of the cockpit, really. Uh, and what I found was when I, when I adjusted those brightness and contrast levels, the monitor on the left with the engine gauges on, as I say, started to phase kind of a little bit with the angle of view. If I move directly in front of it, everything is fine, the contrast is fine. I think what we're getting, because we've got a dark background and because obviously a lot of the detail of the gauges is dark, it's not so much that the monitor is, is fading, it's that the backlight is starting to, I don't know, I suppose scatter. Um, when, when we look at it at an oblique angle. Now this is the vertical viewing angle that's the problem here. Obviously it's horizontal because the monitor has been rotated into portrait orientation, but it's that vertical angle that causes the scatter. If I just explain it with this monitor, there's no such problem with the horizontal angle of view, so you can be way out to the right or the left and, you know, within reason, and the uniformity of the monitor doesn't suffer. I think from memory the viewing angles are quoted pretty much similar values for the horizontal and vertical angles and that just isn't true. Um, so we do get this backlight scatter if we're off axis too much uh, and not by very much at all really in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction when the monitor's on its side. That's a very long-winded explanation. The upshot of that is to make things work really um, satisfactorily. This monitor, although it's tilted in slightly at the moment, it's only by about five degrees. It really needs to be tilted by about twenty degrees, maybe maybe even more. Uh, whether I'm going to do that or not, I'm not sure. You know, it's usable. It's perfectly usable the way it is, and it's kind of nice to have it flush with the dashboard. So we'll see if I can be bothered to move that. I will. Now people have asked me why I've still got the virtual cockpit on the screen now that I've got a full panel and all the instruments and uh, well there's a number of reasons for that and if I, if I just turn myself around and set things up so you can you can see I'll talk a bit more about that. So I'm sitting in the cockpit ready to go I'm just going to talk about the view uh, at the front window. We've still got the virtual cockpit displayed the reason for that is I want to use the track IR and the reason I want to use the track IR is you know although I've got a wide view here it's not that wide and uh, you know it's about 100 degrees wide optimistically and it doesn't show me any side views I don't have any side views in my cockpit and so I want to retain the track IR so you can see I've let me just center it up so I've still got the track IR in play but what I've done is I've still got the full rotation in the yaw axis so I can look out the side windows. I've still got the six degrees of freedom so I can move right and left up and down. That's glitching because I've the track R's gone out of range of the sensor there. Um, down and I can move backwards and forwards to sort of look out the windows and so on. 
But what I've done is I've restricted the up and down movement. So we've still got some up and down movement. Basically so I can kind of look out and up or sideways and uh, if I'm in that side sideways and down when I'm flying but I don't have a lot of up and down I struggle to see the whole panel with, but, that's, but that's fine I don't need to see the whole panel so this is still a work in progress I'm still tinkering with this now people have asked me why I don't just use the outside view and dispense with the virtual cockpit altogether. Well there's lots of reasons for that. Now one reason is I think it looks good you know to have the cockpit walls and the superstructure available and blocking the view in all the appropriate places. I think that's a good feature. Of course we've got some things that are quite handy to be able to see in the virtual cockpit. We've still got the magnetic compass here, we've got the flap indicator here, we've got the windscreen wipers here although they don't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, what else? We, uh, I don't suppose it's that useful. We can see the throttles moving over here uh, and also the prop levers we can look at if we need to do that. Those are the only things we really need to see in the virtual cockpit. That said, having the, the window surrounds is also useful in judging our attitude when we're making a turn. So for example I know that straight and level pretty much with my default seat height the horizon is going to fall just about the top of this flap indicator or the bottom of the pivot on the windscreen wiper. When I'm making a level left hand turn the horizon is going to cut the glare shield right about here. When I'm making a level right hand turn this corner of this thing is going to be on the horizon. You know that's just a little set of pictures that you create that assist you in flying the aircraft. If you don't, if you get rid of this virtual cockpit furniture you've got to do it some other way. So that's another reason. Now the outside view, it is possible to get a plain outside view in the aircraft. I think it is. If I cycle through these views So this is the outside view and the track IR does turn it so I could still use the track IR in the manner I've described. There's two problems with this. The first problem I've just described which is we've lost the virtual cockpit furniture that allows us to make judgments about the aircraft attitude. The second thing is if you turn your head to the right the cockpit suddenly appears and the left likewise and that's just very unrealistic. Now you could limit the track R your axis but we don't really want to. We sometimes want to look uh, all that you know that distance around to one side or the other. I'm going to continue to experiment with this. You know I'm not saying yes or no but for the moment that's not the view that I'm choosing to use. I'm going to stick with the virtual cockpit. So that's about it for now. There's not really going to be too much more to say about this cockpit. I'm going to do some flying videos when it's done. Um, one thing I'm playing with the idea of doing a, a complete end-to-end -end flight, going through all the checklists and so on, which will show, which, you know, that might be quite dull actually, <laughs> but, um, but what that will do is it will show in absolute detail all of the systems and all the gauges and indicators in combination with the switches in my cockpit. So I'll think about that, you know, if that looks like it's shaping up to be too boring I'll do some sort of edited version of that. But uh, I think it might be quite good for the purists who are thinking of doing something similar to this. I mean there's two aspects really, one is to show off the interplay between the actual hardware switches and the indicators and the gauges and the other thing is to, to just show how having the gauges and the indicators make it much more flyable. So I might do something with a um, an ILS approach or something like that, which should show you know it'll, it'll show the use of the autopilot with the indicators, 
the NAV indicators, the HSI, the ADI, what else, the, the marker beacons, and so on. Can't think of anything else, but uh, so look out for that. That's coming up. Now a few people have asked me if they can get these gauges, if these gauges are going to be made available. Well, the, the truth is they're not finished yet, um, so they're not available generally at the moment. That said, if you're keen to try out the gauges in a beta test sort of way, then I suggest you get in contact with me and I'll do my best to hook you up with Russ at Sim Innovations and uh, maybe you can get the gauges in a preview sort of form. So there we go, that's all for now.